Hero, I owe you a response about non-duality um, because you're right, this concept of oneness, it seems to marginalize uh, difference. It seems to make you feel like, um, you know, everything is already whole, everything's already perfect, and, and um, there's no need to try to get anything else, and no need to, ha to be driven in life. Um, because if everything is already fundamentally one, you may as well just uh, sit back and relax and take it all in, you know? Uh, but I, I think um, I agreed with your criticism, actually, because uh, differences aren't um, canceled by non-duality. Uh, non-duality isn't necessarily synonymous with oneness. Um, the question we have to ask uh, about differences, though, is... Um, what does it mean to be different? And I think you would agree with this, uh, Piero, that all differences are relative. They exist uh, in context. They are not independent facts about the world, which exist objectively uh, without any input from us. In other words, you know, consciousness. Basically, it's just our ability to pay attention um, to certain aspects or concepts uh, of the world and certainly the world is very uh, very intimately or intricately uh, and intimately patterned you know we can look out at the world and you know it's doing amazing things that required billions of years of evolution and, uh, you know, traditional modern biology um, basically says that organisms are uh, machines. They're blind uh, algorithms that just sort of have been crunching along for billions of years, and they're continuing now to crunch along, just they're doing it at a, uh, a neural level or, you know, a physiochemical level. And, you know, the metaphor, calling them machines or calling them computers, um, it, it strikes me as odd because I, they're just, you know, based, based on my intuition, my emotion, my actual embodied experience of the world, they seem to be very different from, you know, computers. Because computers can pull up all this information that seems pretty relevant at the time. Uh, you know, computers can make you think that they're alive sometimes, you know, at least when they're connected to the internet. Uh, but, you know, there's that thing over there, and it, it always requires my input before it does anything intelligent. But but modern science says that that's fundamentally identical to what, what this is doing. This, this is just a little bit more uh, um, complex, you know. Evolution's just a little bit better than human beings are. At, at engineering uh, machines, but uh, you know, modern science has all the confidence that we'll catch up relatively soon. Uh, somehow, that seems to miss the fact that all differences are related, um, and you know, the idea that we're trying to pinpoint intelligence in the world. Um, like consciousness is something that modern science for looks uh, to the brain for like it's it, whatever it is it's in here even if it's absolutely nothing but this complex pattern it's still it's what this thing here is doing um, because we assume that it's the it that there's actually information in this computer over here and you know that word information it means that there's data which exists obje objectively as a mathematical pattern in the world over there that has no uh, requirement of a, of a human being, of an organism to make meaning out of it for it to be real. It, it exists already. Um, that's what makes us think that a computer could be just as you know, intelligent or conscious as uh, a cat. But I think the only reason 
we think intelligence would ever be in in an individual thing in the universe uh, is that we're, we're we're making too big of a deal about differences and forgetting the wholeness underlying it. Uh, so basically, I don't think consciousness is something we're going to find here or out in uh, the world. Certainly, I mean nobody believes that, but. Uh, I think it's an interaction. Reality is non-dual. Subject and object um, are never separate. They're related. There are many differences between um, subjectivity and objectivity. Many ways to conceptualize them. and um, There are many ways, certainly, to chop up the physical world. Um, into all kinds of things, you know, different different species of organisms, uh, different uh, types of molecules, different elements, uh, different subatomic particles, and it just it, apparently it, it just goes all the way down. Many many differences exist in the, in our experience of the world emotionally, uh, in the inner and outer world. There are many differences, but to assume that um, they are ultimate. I think uh, neglects non-duality, which always underlies every experience we have. So it's not something you ever have to look for. It's not some difference in the world that you're going to mark off and say, "Ah, oh, here it is. I've circled it. I've put it into a container. Now I have it." Non-duality is, uh, you know, it's before all the circle drawing. It's the circle that's part of the activity of drawing itself. You know. And uh, so non-duality doesn't necessarily cancel difference. It just reminds us that uh, opposites always coincide. Everything always exists together. And there may be many relationships between um, various aspects of reality. And you define an aspect by whatever it is that you're paying attention to at the time. Uh, and you can we can remember many concepts which are basically just these mental images that put us back into the state of mind when we're paying attention to that particular aspect of either a sensation or perception or some kind of uh, linguistic uh, memory. But it all exists in context. It all goes together. Uh, and when we're doing science, I think this is relevant, not because it changes the way we design and do experiments and collect data. Uh, it just changes the way we then interpret that data. Um, it, it defines the way we then think about causality and non-locality and complexity. Uh, so uh, I'll leave it at that. Let me know what you think.